2016 through the first nine months of 2018, we had 33 reported crashes at the railroad trestle, uh, Crawl Brown and Broadway, right here, the back. Um, so we hired Choice One Engineering to do a safety study of that area. Um, they found that 32 of the accidents were for the southbound direction on Carl Brown, and only one of them was for the westbound direction on Broadway. Um, most of the accidents occurred on dry pavement and in daylight hours, so the pavement condition and the lighting are a factor. Um, about half of the crashes were cargo or passenger vans that are um, just under nine foot high. Uh, the other half or so um, are single unit box trucks, and most of those exceed 10 feet high. Um, so in the report, they found that what we have out there existing meets and exceeds state standards. So one of their um, you know, potential actions for us is to maintain existing. Um, we did go out and um, follow the state's manuals for increased conspicuity. We basically um, enlarged a bunch of the signs, enlarged some of the font. Um, we did fluorescent yellow versus standard yellow. There are strips on the signposts that are also fluorescent yellow. Um, on the bridge sign face itself, that, side, that sign is um, almost twice as big, I think, as the old one. It's got a diagonal hatch border around the outside. Um, those obviously are enough because we still have a lot of crashes. <laughs> Hopefully none of you, there was some truck Hopefully none of you hit it. Um, but um, we've, we've done a lot, but we went to Choice One to see what else out there we could do. Um, so other than maintaining the existing, um, one of their ideas was to increase signage and they would start farther back than what we are. Um, what they have proposed are signs at the two nearest intersections that say something like no through trucks on southbound Broadway or no through trucks on westbound Broadway. Um, we may change the wording a little bit, but it's, that's basically it. Um, so for those approaches, to give some more advanced signage before they make the turn, before a vehicle would commit, try to get their attention at the light um, so they don't have to pull and turn around in the parking lot. Um, they also mentioned that we can notify map and direction providers. Um, like Google Maps, um, Apple Maps, and MapQuest. Um, I actually reached out to all three of them and I got a thanks for your input, I'll get back to you. Um, MapQuest actually told me, did you think about putting a sign up there? <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's also several other apps out there that give you directions. Um, and a bunch of these I don't have access to. So if any of you guys use them, please let them know we have a little clearance trestle. Uh, Tom Tom and Garmin's. Um, Ways Uber here, um, a lot of car manufacturers will have their own guidance systems too. Um, so if you're a part of any of those, um, the other the other thing that Choice One suggested was an overheight detection system. Um, and this overheight detection system would activate some beacons on the signs. Um, so that's what we have pictured here. It's, it's a two sets here and two sets here. Um, and it would, it would basically replace what we have out there now with the LED lights around the perimeter that blink 24-7. These would be two large flashing yellow beacons on the tops of the signs that would blink only if your vehicle triggers it. Um, so farther up the road from these signs, there's going to be some poles with some infrared transmitters and receivers sending a signal across the road at 8 foot high and if you cross through that infrared beam, it'll make these beacons go off. No alarms or noise, but at least hopefully that'll get attention better than the small blinking lights on the perimeter. Um, the other idea that they looked at was lowering the profile of the road by two foot. Um, so we would have a 10 foot low clearance bridge <laughs> instead of an eight. Um, we would still probably get half the accidents that we do now, as I mentioned, Half the accidents that we had in the last uh, three years, approximately, were um, box trucks that were over 10 foot. Um, so, right off the bat, you know, this big expensive change isn't going to solve it, but all of our traffic issues with um, those crashes. 
Um, it would also require 700 feet of road work <coughs> just for the transition required to bring it down to foot to grade. And within that 700 feet, you'd have to uh, relocate the utilities in the them because they mostly have requirements on depth of cover. Um, on top of that, even the bigger issue uh, would be the flooding, um, especially with the rain that we've had lately. We know that that area floods. Um, there's a storm sewer pipe off the edge of the road in the grass, and, they, and that basically collects the water and kicks it out to the river. Um, when the river gets high, it floods there because the outlet is underwater for the river. Um, so, if we were to lower the road by two foot, that whole storm sewer pipe would also lower by two foot. Um, so that means that we would flood more often, more extensively. Now that all of that 700 foot is lower, if it's spread out farther, it would impact access um, to private properties. It would um, impact safety greater. Um, it would take longer for the river water to go back down two more feet. Um, so it would be flooded for a longer duration. So I don't think anybody wants that. Um, it was a very costly option. Um, so I, they didn't recommend we look at that one, and I don't either. Um, and they didn't even evaluate an at-grade crossing and relocate the road um, because they thought it would be even more expensive, uh, the construction cost and the end acquisition cost. Um, and there would also be safety concerns and um, operational delays with traffic when a train would cross because you're now crossing over the tracks. Um, so the choice one recommendation at the end of the study uh, was a combination of the two things that are shown on here, the advanced signage at both the intersections and taking out our LED lights that we have there now and we can salvage the majority of that. We're mostly not able to salvage the poles and the foundations, uh, some of the wiring. Um, we can find another spot to reuse those in the city, I'm sure. Um, just not the eight foot message part. <laughs> Um, so we'll, um, we'll look at reusing those pieces elsewhere and uh, potentially putting in these four signs. Um, the cost for this is $49,016 according to their estimate. Um, and that is only for materials, not installation. Um, Public Works could probably install most of it. Um, we may have to hire a company to do the special infrared part of the system. Um, and then, the is already applied, correct? Yeah, we reached, as this, uh, this study was coming to fruition, and we realized that we weren't going to be low on the road, and um, it was actually almost a, a total year uh, road, our road program budget. Um, we really started to focus on these, uh, this infrared beam, and I reached out to a climate kind of engineer who sent me to the uh, ODOT representative for our district, who felt this was a good candidate for what's called safety funding and uh, was a viable option. So basically what I submitted was the study, the woes of why we need this, how we could potentially do it to expedite it. <coughs> and uh, I, there, per this last email, are reviewing it. Today at the department head meeting, we looked at good locations to reuse those existing, uh, being diamond, diamond shaped, we were looking warning areas and I think one of the thoughts today was uh, out of engage approach the curve. Uh, that has been long been wanted to, to do that in advance of the curve on 48. So if these are solar we would simply have to just put in new bases. So we are going to reuse those because what you're doing now is and I'm not a hundred sure percent sure that we can do that. But that's that's an option. Um, what you'd be looking at now is where you see that constant blinking. That's going to be, that's, that, will be, that will be no action until it's triggered. Um, what we're trying to figure out now is whether or not we want, on top of the fact that it will begin to flash feverishly as someone breaks the beam, there is the option that we can add more to it to, as part of the package. We're just a little nervous about it. Uh, um, uh, how loud it is. As long as they can't hear it down at uh, Music Hall. Yeah. <laughs> so we, I, I really, I just want to say that I, I think City Council, we, we, uh, maybe we, uh, we were late in getting the study. I think the study was very beneficial. Choice One Engineer did the study. It's right across the street. 
Uh, and there's times like this that makes that, that relationship very beneficial. And I think uh, in the work of Cindy, she picked up a lot of things that needed to be corrected. That's the benefit to us having an in-house city engineer. But we, we are determined to, to make improvements. By no means are we going to make this go away. But I think we applied for both the signage and the, um, the advance warning. And we would then uh, take it from there. So hopefully we'll get the project funded. We'll reuse the existing equipment so there's no waste. And you'll see an improvement. So thanks a lot. Any questions? Yeah, I, I have a question for Mr. Braun. Uh, Joe, do you see any liability issues if by some chance the beacon system doesn't work, sort of creating like, well, it didn't go off, so the city's at fault that my truck was ruined because I went under this bridge? No. No? You're not concerned? Okay. So this, it's just, this is a cautionary measure that cities can take. There's no liability issues. Yeah, I mean, our, our governmental immunity would apply, but... I think the real question is just how much, how much of a warning system do we need to put in place? As the police chief is aware, I prosecute in Mayor's Court how often per year these trucks that are cited by our police for coming in and disregarding. I think our magistrate indicated there were a total of eight, I think, eight different signs or warning devices in place now that she saw that should have put them on notice before they would have hit the trestle. So the question becomes, like Cindy's pointing out, do we need something that's different besides a sign? You know, something that gets their attention other than a sign. And I've heard that lecture again and again and again. And no, there's no liability to the city, but I would certainly like to stop seeing all these people come into yep. marriage court again and again and again. Mm -hmm. Each time they say, I didn't know, I didn't see it, this would be hard to miss. Can I just add to that that I have the same concern about so I reached out to ODOT and I asked for their opinion also. And they said that a lot of it comes down to the wording of the sign. Okay. And they recommended that we do not use a sign that has any sort of phrase like wind flashing. So it says low clearance, whether it blinks at you or not, it's still low clearance. If it says, you know, turn around because you're you know, too tall and it doesn't go off, then that may create liability. So they wanted to make sure that, that phrase wind flashing wasn't there and we just standard signs, it's low clearance, it's low clearance, whether it's flashing or not. Thanks. I, I just want to add, from the, after I graced the news on this topic, I got a lot of emails from residents, all very well intended with different thoughts and uh, uh, options that we could do, and the one consistent was that, you know, the drive-through effect that you get from McDonald's, and that is a uh, liability because uh, that, that is not something that we can do you know, physical, uh, a, 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 something that your car would strike. Um, we, we, Cindy went through the motions and we did check, but that would be a liability to the city. Uh, and uh, she cited codes, but at the end of the day, it's, it's not something we can install <coughs> that would, you would strike something that would say, hey, it's not, it's fine on public, private property as you want to McDonald's, but it's not something we're allowed to put across the public city street, correct? In Lennon's terms? Yes. You mentioned applying for a grant. Yeah. If successful, would we be able to fund the whole 49000 I asked for the whole 49000 okay. Basically, we threw in the signage okay. because um, from what it appears, it makes the application a little bit better. We are hoping that this application works to the sense where ODOT makes the purchase turns the material over to the city for installation. So then Public Works would install the signage, the four flashers, they would install the signage, and then we would just hire a separate contract with a company such as a and Safety to make sure that the beams are installed by a professional, everything else. That's sort of the, the plan that we feel makes the project the most desirable for ODOT to, to get the safety funding. Thank you, sir.